There's a special kind of pride That you feel deep down inside A strength that seems to thrive In Lima, Allen County The American way of life To get in gear and do what's right An unbreakable forthright link Called Real American Strength Lima, Allen County Real American Strength Keeping you up to date with what's happening in your community. Community Focus on GTV2. Thanks for joining us today on Community Focus. I'm Ann Decker. Have you bought a ticket for Toby Keith at the Allen County Fair? <laughs> How about a Broadway show at the Civic Center? Did you actually buy them from the Civic Center or the Allen County Fair? Maybe not. Here in the studio today are Cindy Wood and David Grimm from the Civic Center and the mm -hmm. Fairgrounds, and we're going to talk about ticket scalping. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. This is something that's definitely hit, starting to hit our community. The more we have the bigger names come in, it's really an issue of buyer beware, uh, so that you as a buyer don't pay too much. Okay, so you want a ticket for Toby Keith, you go online, you type in Toby Keith, Lima, Ohio. Does the fairgrounds pop up first thing? Usually we don't. We're probably going to be number five, six, seven, or eight, mm. depending on the day, depending on the tickets go on sale, and depending on how big the act is. The bigger the act, the more the resellers want to get involved because that's where they can make their money. Sure. How much more are they making off the tickets? Well, in some cases, they're charging three times what our you are our, kidding. our ticket price would be. Yes. Oh, I mean, wouldn't the people buying them realize that? You would think so because we had we had mm -hmm. put in our our press releases what the ticket prices were, and most people would ask other people, "Are you going? And what what ticket mm -hmm. prices are you going to pay?" Most people want to know that information before they go online sure. and buy the ticket. But sometimes people get confused, they get excited, they simply want to buy it right now. It looks very legit. Maybe sometimes they think, well, I mm -hmm. forgot what the ticket price was, and they just click, keep, they keep clicking through, and pretty mm -hmm. soon they've bought the ticket and have paid, uh, you know, $180 for a, a ticket that maybe cost $62. Mm -hmm. Who are these resellers that are, you know, getting your tickets, and how well, do they get them? Well, the, the mm -hmm. most, the, well, they buy them from us. That's the only <laughs> way they can get the ticket is to buy them from us. And resellers have uh, have, have phone banks that they're they're calling repeatedly. I hear they can make a thousand calls a minute. They have machines yeah. that will do that. Mm -hmm. And in some t cases, they'll actually be selling tickets before we actually go on sale. I remember for mm -hmm. Toby Keith, we had people calling us at 8:30 in the morning and say, "I've already got my tickets." <laughs> we hadn't gone on sale till <laughs> nine o'clock. Yet the mm -hmm. resellers were selling tickets out there before they even had them. Mm -hmm. So it can be quite confusing for some folks. Well, how many of the tickets for an average show do you think are going through resellers? We don't always know that. We can maybe guess at that, maybe based on a zip code analysis, mm -hmm. but we don't always know that information because it may be the transaction information, Ann Decker, John Smith, Jane Doe, it, it's all. And, and they don't buy them right. by company. They buy them. They buy them through individuals. They have people working using just their own names. Oh, no kidding. So we really wouldn't have an idea. But there are companies. StubHub is probably the most famous. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, when a person goes on to a search engine and, and they put in Toby Keith Lime Ohio, StubHub in many cases will come up number one because number uh, uh, um, uh, uh, StubHub is buying that space online. They're actually buying that advertising <laughs> to be in that mm -hmm. position number one, two, three, or four, and a lot of times we won't be seen until we're the five, six, or seventh position on that page. So from your point of view, you're still selling the tickets, so why do you care? That's, you know, that's, it's becoming an accepted practice in the industry. Absolutely, the artist is happy that the tickets are sold. We're happy that the tickets are sold. What we care about is that our patrons, our, our local residents who are buying, are making sure that they're buying from the right source, because ZZ Top tickets, uh, you are in the house. Sure. Uh, you didn't need to be paying three and four hundred dollars for those tickets. The second thing is that you know we have a, a um, we have to have a service fee affiliated in order to provide the web based. So you, we have the purchase price of the ticket. We have the service fee. Usually ours is a four dollar service fee. If you go through a ticket reseller, your service fee not only are you paying our fees, but you're paying that ticket reseller service fee as well as their profit margin. So you're like Dave said, it's two and three times what the person uh, needs to pay. Secondly, 
if you're doing a night out on the town, and I certainly don't have a laser printer to print money at home, <laughs> um, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a budgeting situation. So therefore, if you're paying that much for a ticket, a part of what we want to do is churn economic activity. Uh, you're not you're not doing other things with that money. No, they, you're not going out to dinner ahead of time they, or They may have drinks. burned up all their money just buying the tickets and don't have any extra spare mm -hmm. money to buy other mm -hmm. things. Well, does it cause any problems on your end if people are getting their tickets elsewhere? Yes, absolutely, if, they're, if the tickets are not mailed and delivered in time. And then they call you and, and yell. And then what we do is, Anne, if you come in and buy tickets, I expect you to have a driver's license or a form of ID to make sure that you're the person buying the ticket. If that information does not match up with the buyer, there is nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of time, in fact, I've gone on and, and looked. I, I have bought through StubHub on one occasion that I wanted to buy tickets, and the show happened to be sold out. And I knew exactly what I was doing. And the, and the tickets didn't arrive until the day before the show. And mm -hmm. sometimes they'll come overnight delivery. Well, you get very nervous. Sure. So if I want to buy the tickets for my mm -hmm. daughter in New York City, but the, they're being shipped to me, how do I get them to her? So it can be quite confusing when you're down to the wire with a couple mm -hmm. days to go and you haven't received the tickets yet. You get, you get pretty nervous. So what advice do you have for people who want to attend a local event or for that matter any event anywhere? How do they get a legitimate ticket? Take your time when you're online. Make sure that you're buying from the correct source. Uh, make sure, go and check out the website. For us, it's LimaCivicCenter.com, AllenCoFair.com. Uh, be very conscious about what you're doing. Don't jump to a conclusion. Maybe investigate your Google results. Go down the list of the top 10 or 20 Google results. If you're Googling ZZ Top Lima or Toby Keith Lima, just buyer beware. Don't click too fast. In other words, maybe practice a little bit before the tickets actually go on sale <laughs> that day. You know, and just know what yeah. website you're going to be using. Okay. Anything else you'd like folks to know? Uh, we'll, we'll see you at the fair and, and buy your, <laughs> and buy your right Toby too. Keith tickets at allencofair.com and we've got about 3,000 tickets yet to sell. So. Wonderful. I appreciate you both coming in today. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Cindy Wood from the Civic Center and David Grimm from the fairgrounds. I'm Ann Decker and this is Community Focus on GTV2. Let's all do our part to keep the Ottawa River clean and healthy. Clean trash and debris from storm drains to keep them from being washed into the river. Your actions matter. Lima City Council has recently amended the city's vicious dog warnings to deal with potential problems concerning dangerous dogs in the public. The ordinance is comprehensive. However, here are some key elements that all dog owners and their neighbors should be aware of. Any dog that is considered a breed of pit bull is considered a vicious dog regardless of its temperament. A vicious dog is any dog that attacks, bites, or causes injury to a person or domestic animal with or without provocation. not under control of the owner, and secured with a muzzle and a leash of six feet or less in length. All vicious dogs must be confined when outside in a pen with a secured top and bottom or with the sides of the pen embedded at least one foot deep into the ground. If you're a dog owner and have concerns about any dogs in your neighborhood, visit LimaPoliceDepartment.com to find out more about the city's vicious dog ordinance. The fine for non-compliance is $150 per citation, and ignorance of the law is not a defense. If there's an emergency situation, call local law enforcement for immediate assistance. Do you know what to do when you hear the community warning sirens? The sirens are activated any time the public is in life-threatening danger. This can be from weather emergencies, chemical releases, or other situations. When you hear the sirens, go inside and turn on your radio or television for more information. Follow the instructions carefully and stay inside until the danger has passed. Remember, the sirens mean to go inside and listen to your radio or television for more information. Take the necessary steps to keep you and your family safe. We're back on Community Focus. I'm Ann Decker, and I'm pleased to welcome to the studio today Tim Allison and Chuck Wolf. Chuck is with Family Promise. Tim is with Ohio Cycle Works. And the Scramble Run is coming up on May 10th. You want to tell us about it? Yeah, the uh, Scramble Run, uh, this is our uh, fifth annual. It's a, um, a motorcycle car show um, extravaganda um, where we had, you know, you can have an old car, new car, and then a custom bike, new bike, old bike, and come out. And, um, and show your car or bike for the day. We got chicken dinners. Uh, we're giving away a brand new Honda motorcycle on Saturday, May 10th. Uh, it's invited for the whole family. And we've got about 100 to 120 door prizes to be given away, so your odds are very good at winning something. 
And the neat thing is everything goes to Family Promise. Uh, and we call it our Scrabble Run, which is a little different than a poker run. We use the Scrabble game, um, and you get the little tiles with uh, uh, letters on it, and you build a word, and then whoever wins that, we pay a $300, $200 in-store gift certificate, uh, and then along with about 100 to 120 door prizes. Good deal. So if you're not into bikes or cars, you don't have one you want to show or ride, come out anyway? You can come out. You know, we have people, it's kind of neat, we have people that come out and just drive up and donate money to Family Promise. We've had that more than once. So it's a great organization, so you can come out and look around. We also have lawnmowers, go-karts, snowblowers, Honda generators this time <laughs> of year because of the storm's coming, hopefully not. But, uh, yeah, bring the whole family out. It's a big, fun day. Okay, Chuck, what do you do with the money? Well, uh, Family Promise, of course, uh, we serve uh, homeless families here in Allen County. We're the only agency that serves homeless families. Uh, presently, we have three families that we're working with. Uh, there's nine children and three adults. And what Family Promise does, we provide a respite for homeless families to help them find housing and employment by working through social agencies, businesses, uh, community organizations to help them get back on their feet. Family Promise has been in existence since 2008. And there's a strong involvement from the local churches too, correct? Absolutely. We do it in partnership with 11 uh, local churches and they provide volunteers in the evening lodging for the families. They provide meals and the volunteers, like I just said, and it's a good way for churches to get acquainted, uh, to accomplish a lot of their mission and vision work in their churches, and also to help our families uh, move on to, to better things. You know, I think a lot of people are going to be surprised when they hear that this is the only organization that serves homeless families. We know of the Rescue Mission, we know of Samaritan House, but they serve men or they serve women. That's it's right. not really a family. Well, well, studies have shown that the, the more you can keep the family together in a situation like this, the better the, um, the results. And so Family Promise, we're a nationwide organization. There's eight affiliates here in Ohio, but the whole idea is to keep the family together. Uh, sometimes we have a male and a female. Sometimes we have a single male or a single female. But they, we serve only families. Of course, they have to have children. And we've had children as young as three months to um, 17 years old. So we, we span the whole age of children. What's your success rate? Well, our success rate is good. We have about 80% of our families find housing. Um, and then sometimes it's housing and employment. We do have families sometimes come in, family promise with being employed, sometimes not. But about 80% of the families actually get housing and keep the housing that they uh, find. That's wonderful. What a great service. So this is one of your fundraisers. That's correct. If um, people are interested in participating, do they need to sign up first? No, they do not need to sign up. They just show up on May 10th. Um, it's a $20 donation. And that $20 goes a long way. That gets you a chance to win the new Honda motorcycle, which is worth $5,000. And if you're not a motorcyclist and would not uh, desire not to take the motorcycle, we will give you cash. Um, but once, um, uh, uh, and that, that $20 also gets you into the, into the Scrabble Run ride. So um, you do not have to uh, pre-register. Just show up Saturday morning. What time? Um, at 9 o'clock as okay. uh, the registration starts. At 10 o'clock, the first bike out, last bike in, I think, is at 12.30, and then we start judging at 1 o'clock, and at 2 o'clock sharp, um, we give away the brand new Honda motorcycle to some lucky winner. So there's stuff going on for hours. Hours. You can come out. We're going to have a lot of stuff on sale. We're going to have popcorn. There's chicken dinners. You can just mingle with a lot of people, look at all the neat bikes, the neat cars, and uh, we're going to have a great, nice, sunny day, I hope. Okay. <laughs> if people want more information, what's the best way to get it? Um, but call Family Promise at 419-879-4600. Okay. Or you can call Ohio Cycle Works at 419-331-2333. Or shoot us an email on the web at ohcycle.com. Okay. We appreciate you coming in today. Good well, luck with it. Well, thank you. Sure. Yeah, thank you for having us. Chuck Wolf and Tim Allison. I'm Ann Decker, and this is Community Focus on GTV2. Thank you for contacting the Ohio Utilities Protection Service before you dig. Because knowing where underground utilities are located matters. It matters for the safety of your crew, 
the job schedule. It matters to the customers you serve. And it's the law. You can call us or go to OUPS.org to put the safe digging process in motion. Because keeping Ohio safe every time you dig matters most. A message from the Allen County Chiefs Association. With the recent rise in juvenile crime, all Allen County police agencies are stepping up our efforts to reduce this with the enforcement of curfew laws. This affects anyone under the age of 18. Local laws may vary in age and time requirements among the villages, townships, and cities in the county. So please help us in our efforts by becoming familiar with the curfew law. Please check the websites on your screen for specific curfew information. Together we can make Lime Allen County a safer place in which to live and work. Let's all do our part to keep the Ottawa River clean and healthy. Pick up pet waste and dispose of it in your trash so it doesn't end up in the storm drain. Your actions matter. Help keep the youth of Lima safe by donating to Lima Safety City today. Hello, I'm Chuck Eichelberger from the Lima Noon Optimist Club. Safety City is a very important part of the Lima community. The Optimist Club is renovating Safety City and it needs your help. Donations can be made by going to the website Lima Safety City. 